short for Vancouver over the line. Dishes it off with stop, Chuck to the net. Back hitter. Nice save by Drew Sim with the pad. Another marvelous save against his former team. Poke forward by Spencer, left side to the net. Nice little move to the goal. It's loose in front. They score! Sam Aremba right on the doorstep. Here comes Stanislas Fozel. He'll bring the puck out to center. Fozel already with two assists this game. Nice little drag move right side. A shot blocker save. Rebound. Scores! Hat-trick goal for Tanner Howe. His first career hat-trick. Welcome to Pat's Cast, the unofficial Regina Pat's podcast with your hosts, Chris Clark and Kevin Shaw. All right, Kevin, lots to talk about this week. Uh, unfortunately, I had another interview with Bill Wilms. We did it, but technological issues came into play, and we do not have that interview for you guys. It, uh, Oh, man, it, it crushed me. Whatever happened, I don't know what happened, but it was not good, so... It's just Chris and Kevin this week, so we've got lots to talk about. Um, but I just want to say again, thanks for Bill for his time. I mean, we had another great 45-minute chat. We reviewed the Vancouver game and, and did talk to the other three upcoming games. But, uh, yeah, it's too bad. Such a good guy with his time and so knowledgeable with this league and his experiences. So it was, it was, it was a great chat, but unfortunately no one's going to hear it. Not even Kevin. You didn't even get to preview it or anything. So... But yeah, we so we got lots to talk about this week. I guess we can start off before the games. Uh, we had some roster moves. Um, first of all, Pat's brought in Riley Janelle for a 2026 fifth rounder from Moose Jaw. So what do you think of that, Kevin? Oh, he brings some size. He's he is a 20 year old, and uh, it's it's an interesting move. He had 14 goals last year, which is. Not great, but not bad. Like I said, he's got some size. He's a left-handed shot forward, which is something the Pats didn't really have too many of. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, actually, got, a of, they got a lot of righties. Yeah, they actually made note of that. Like, yeah, we could use a left-handed shot up front. I mean, they've got all sorts of left-handed defensemen, but uh, there's a lot of right-handed shots up front. So, And I do like the fact he has uh, ties to the Pats. His dad, Aaron, played for the Pats back in the, the 80s, mid-80s there, so... It's kind of cool, and his his grandpa was a uh, a legendary coach in the league, Patty Janelle. So that's that's very cool in itself. Yeah, that is definitely. Um, so it looks like Jacob Brook has moved on to the MJHL. It looks like he's going to play with his brother. Uh, where was that again? Dauphin. Dauphin. The Dauphin Kings. Yeah. So good luck to him. I mean, he's had a he's had a rough go in this league. Uh, you know, it's with, too with, bad. I know, right? Just when just when you thought he was turning around and getting going, and you get hurt. Yeah. And so then he'd get back and he'd get hurt. And then, uh, yeah. yeah, it's too bad. So hopefully he can make the best of his final season in junior hockey. And then uh, found out that Logan Linklater has moved on to Kindersley, I think it was, Kindersley Clippers. Yeah. So it looks like he, he's decided to go play there or whatever the situation is. And, uh, yeah, so hopefully he can make a go of it there. Um, yeah, so, I mean – Open up some spots, so they brought in Janelle. Um, uh, I mean, they they need some more scoring, I think. But I mean, like you said, Janelle has 14 goals last year. He, he, you know, with this team, he, he be nice. Can put up another 14, maybe 20 goals this year. The rest of the season, that that would be not bad. I wouldn't mind that. It for sure. Well, uh, the last game they prove they don't really need to score more goals or anything like that yeah. to keep the goals out <laughs> yeah I'm, yeah that's kind of a a, a precursor <laughs> yeah a precursor but uh yeah so like you said he's looks like he's got some decent speed and he's big body he can play physical he can probably play up and down the lineup since he does have some skill so you know maybe once some of these guys are gone to juniors World Juniors that he can slot into a higher or a, you know higher end role. So we'll and see. once he gets to practice and stuff, they can see what kind of what actually he can bring to the team, other than just size and what they've seen previously. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they've really practiced. I think they had a skate on Thursday slash practice thing in Vancouver, and that's probably it. You know, the turnaround from from Saturday uh, from Friday night to Saturday was quick. You know, getting out to Victoria is quite the quite the adventure. It's early morning for them, so 
there's no no chance there to to get a practice under under his belt with this team. So he'll be he'll be able to get some. Maybe they'll probably have us skate on Monday. I'd think another travel day today, Sunday, and then uh, then Tuesday night they're already back at it. Yeah. So I guess we can head into the games uh, if you got nothing else there. Yeah, that's. It's going to be interesting how things shake out once Bedard and Suzdalev and Sposal all potentially will leave. Because so, Michaels and Barnett aren't getting into the lineup the last couple of games. So they'll, yeah, like they'll there's get some extra, more ice time. Yeah, yeah. I think even Barnett's maybe a little dinged up at the moment, isn't he? That's possible, yeah. I'm but sure yeah, Michael, a lot of them are dinged up. And yeah, no, for sure. And I think Michaels... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think Michaels is actually a healthy scratch, but I think I thought I heard or seen somewhere that Barnett was actually actually hurt. So, but anyway, so I guess, yeah, we'll roll into Friday night. I mean, all the hoopla on the West Coast, Bedard's first game out there, Bedard's 100th game, hometown kid. There was tons of hype, you know, media attention was off the charts. This, the Pats tweeted out to the media scrum. There must have been, you know, eight, six eight people there so oh, quite a few quite a few more than yeah here. <laughs> more than here that's for sure you know old rob and chris after the game it's, it's <laughs> not much happened in here but uh yeah so you know there's there's a lot of hype and i mean vancouver does a really good job they uh they had a whole hour pregame so i, I tuned in to their pregame and it was pretty good stuff like that and and a sellout crowd so you could hear the buzz in the rink like through the broadcast like it was it was it was you missed that like we haven't had that in years now right so no no buzz here no unfortunately <laughs> not so but i mean well, they did have sellout right so 5200 people and it yeah. looked like it was pretty close to full like there was probably a few empty seats but it looked pretty full yeah no i don't think i i went i think i looked at it and there was none available there was none available in victoria um I think Kelowna is right sold out. Kamloops, there was like standing room tickets available. I believe it'll be sold out by the, by game time. Yeah, I think so. And then PG, it was, seemed like there was quite a few tickets available for PG, PG when I looked this on this weekend. So, but that's that's a few days away. They have lots of time to fill her up. But I mean, getting into the game, I mean, I think right off the bat, you know, everybody's talking Bedard, but the story of the game was Sim. Like he. Uh, he stood on his head. Like that's the best game I've seen him play. That's for sure. Oh, 47 saves in a shutout. That's yeah. uh, pretty impressive. That was more impressive than his last shutout here in Regina. But uh, oh, yeah, by he, far, by far. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that that's the story of the game. And another another guy, I'm, I'm a, you know, he, he played in Vancouver. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm sure that feels good for him, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, and it wasn't you know precursor again looking at this or you know, not jumping ahead but comparing it to the victoria game there was there was two different two totally different wins right like it was it was night and day difference yeah right <laughs> they they grinded it out they had a, a couple greasy goals um the valis one obviously was a was a great goal Sposal yeah. was a great pass up the middle Mm-hmm. And he has the breakaway, but I mean the how goal, the Aremba goal. Those just some hard working plays, and and in front of the net, just bang and crashing, and they score a couple goals. Um, the PK, you know, battled it like they it seemed like Vancouver had lots of chances on the, the PK, but they were able to shut it down. They were and... gifted two power plays too with the too many men, two yeah. too many men plays. I know, right? Back like, to back, almost. Yeah. One the one, off, but then they got a rate of pretty much. Like yeah, the first one. Seconds after. Yeah, the first one should have had, should have been no reason. Like they, they had, they were carrying the puck up on the other side of the ice. There's no reason to have too many men on the ice. The second one was just the the puck got shot across to their bench when they're changing. Like, I don't think anybody actually touched it, but I think it was just too many guys on the ice at it, that it point. The, it looked like it hit the, the forward coming on. Oh, did it hit somebody? Okay. Yeah, he was, he was coming on. It, hit, it looked like it hit him in the leg. Yeah, so but that was just unfortunate. Those, eh, whatever, but two in one game. I know. It's... And then they got one in Victoria too as well. Like <laughs> yeah. So three in two games. Like You don't see many of those and just to see that many, it was just like, ooh, but... Yeah, so I mean, obviously the PK goes back to Sim. Obviously, your goalie's got to be your best penalty killer, and and he was outstanding. So, 
But yeah, I mean, Bedard kept his point streak going. I mean, it was a nice play f- that he threw it out in front and how banged it in somehow. I don't know how that I have puck no got idea in. how that went in. I don't know if it went off. The, if, if he shot it off the defenseman's stick or if the, or he shot the defenseman's stick through the puck. I don't know. What yeah, happened, like that's what I was kind of thinking. Like I think this defenseman had it on his stick and how just hit his stick. Like I don't know. I, I tried watched to watch replay multiple times and I, like, I still couldn't. I still couldn't figure it out. What no. The, what happened there? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was it was an interesting play, but hey, they they got the goal and then uh, Bedard got his point. Yeah, and then the Aremba goal. That was just that was a great play by Spencer. Just go to the net, and then it's good things happen. Aremba goes to that too, and he banks it off the goalie Vikman from behind the goal line. Like that was that was a great play. Like I think he he shot that at him on purpose. Like oh for sure uh, that uh, there's no there's no doubt. Yeah, so that was a great play by him picking up his third goal of the year nice to see him you know hopefully he can get some some goals get some, get some confidence momentum going yeah get momentum yeah some sniping yeah he, we know he's got some skill right so but yeah that was uh that was a it was a good game though it was a fast paced tons of shots in that game like the first period had 34 shots like that was crazy and then i think the third period they were just kind of hanging on yeah, I don't know if they, they, they got the, the bus legs hit them or what happened, but the, I don't know, 16 to 4 shots for Vancouver. The Vancouver was all over them. Yeah. And there was, there was no penalties to have to worry about killing in the third period there, so I don't know what happened. But yeah, it was, but, yeah, we were just hanging on. It was just it was just that road game. We're just we're up two goals at the start of the third, and, and then you get the, the third goal about midway through the period, and it was just, yeah, just hanging on to this 3 nothing lead and they did it it was good to see it was, it was nice to see them get off on the right foot on the on the sure. road trip right that first and get, game get, and get a shutout for sim and his, his former his yeah. former team and brown got himself a, i think he got a helper in that game didn't he yeah yeah former another former giant yeah cool. so i mean yeah you got your bus legs you got the time difference even because you think about it it's a nine thirty start here like that's yeah that's late that's when they're getting off the ice right yeah pretty much yeah so it was nice to see that, and then, and then, yeah, right, right back into it in um, Victoria the next night. Uh, you know, they got to get up early, early morning yeah. bus trip to the ferry, yeah. ferry across. Oh, it's I couldn't imagine quite the adventure. And then they had an earlier start, right? They had uh, a six, six o'clock, six o'clock their time, their time start. So an hour earlier, plus the early morning. So, I mean, the first period was, you know, it was kind of back and forth that. It, it was, I don't know. It it wasn't nearly as exciting. Like I mean, yeah, there was six goals in the first period, but I don't think the play was as good as the Vancouver game. It was very sloppy. Yeah, right. Yeah, goal, some of the goals were really nice, but the the play was sloppy overall. Everybody was just kind of watching. I don't. It seemed like they were watching or whatever. It was, it's it's hard to really say how it was. It was just weird. <laughs> yeah, it was totally totally different. I think you can tell that maybe. Victoria maybe they they don't have that skill I don't want to say they dragged the game down but they're just not as skilled maybe as Vancouver is and uh the flow wasn't there and yeah like I said it was just kind of sloppy and it seems like the pass can play multiple ways like it's it's almost like they don't they don't drive they the, can pl- they can play up or they can play down, play down but they don't happen yeah and it's not like they set the tone it's almost like they respond to the way the other team's playing right like they played up to vancouver they maybe played down to victoria a bit right i don't know if that's i don't know that's kind of i don't know if that's a an actual thing but i mean like it just seems it was, like, it was a totally different style like vancouver plays a bigger they're, they're a bigger heavier team i think and they play a different style they're more they're more aggressive yeah victoria's got their they got their littler guys a few little guys and they can they can skate for not being a a very strong team with the only three wins or whatever there they can skate they got some they got some quick guys yeah and you know when I talked to bill last week he's like if you don't show up victoria will beat you and i mean okay so the pats yeah they're up four two in the first period like they had four goals on eight shots and then they score in the third or in three goals in the second it's seven to two and i and i text you kevin i said okay they got to put you know foot on the throat here they can't let this team back in even though they're not that good what do they go do take some penalties 
Victoria scores three goals in a row, and it's like it's seven five leaving the All second the power period. Play. <laughs> yeah, right. And it was just some bad penalties, and just like like it was, there was they just couldn't do anything on the PK, and and keeper I think wanted a few of those back. Like he he was struggling a bit. The whole team was struggling, right? Like it was just like ooh, like it's scary going into the third at seven five. They've got all the momentum. It's, it's, it's pretty hard to say that though when you have when you have seven goals and the team's struggling that's that's just the weirdest, weirdest i know thing. <laughs> like okay seven two and you think okay it's seven two pats and it's the pats goaltending that gets changed right you're like <laughs> i would have never seen that coming yeah the third period all of a sudden i see sam I'm like what yeah i didn't ex- didn't expect that at all <laughs> i didn't really expect that at all either i'm like okay it's seven five you know we they can they can handle it they you know just got to get their head or their butts and and just finish this game off right but uh i think maybe victoria wasn't pulling their goalie because they may have had an e-bug they've got a, a player listed as the backup and i think he's out of junior b so is he even signed probably not so they may have not been looking to change their goalie no matter what kind of happened uh, barring yeah, injury weird, what i would i was I was wondering why aren't they pulling him? Like he was, you could tell he wasn't, he was struggling four yeah. goals on eight shots in the first period. I'm like, in like most scenarios, that goalie is out. Yeah. Then I looked, I'm like, oh, maybe that's why. Maybe they can't switch him unless he gets hurt. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't know, want to just, switch him. Yeah. I felt but, bad for him. Like the dude got, he got lit up for yeah. in the first, the first two periods, anyways. <laughs> right. And then, yeah. So they sim, sim comes in the third. I mean, and the team kind of shuts it down in the in the third period. Like they only gave up seven shots to Victoria, and they kind of just yeah, kind of iced it there late with that how goal that uh, they didn't think went in, and and then Janelle gets <laughs> the, a, the mass confusion. <laughs> yeah, right. And then they because they scored on that play later, Bedard scored an empty netter, and then it's like they're reviewing. I think they're reviewing Tanner Howe scoring an actual goal so you're like oh okay well one of these guys is getting their fourth goal of the game is it bedard or how <laughs> and then they quickly showed the overhead the overhead replay and you could clearly see the puck go in for how and and everything just kind of went schmozzly for yeah, whatever I, reason like I, nobody seemed to know what was going on no and i seen the replay but i was like i didn't know where i was looking on the replay and i <laughs> seen the puck you know go in and out but i didn't actually see it go in i was like oh and then they didn't show another replay and i was like did that go in and you're like i think it did so i was like okay well they were really quick like i don't know if they they had a budget for the replays the amount of replays for the opposition team or whatever but it just seemed like they quickly show part of the replay of the goal and that was it they never show it again it's like yeah it was like if you blink you you missed it (laughs) yeah no doubt right like i was like oh i didn't i didn't see i didn't get a good look at that replay but yeah so how with four goals i mean bedard with three um yeah it was just kind of it was almost like point night and then they kind of yeah it was an ugly road win i mean there's lots of circumstances you know with the with the travel and stuff it's i mean you can't take anything away or can't take can't be too negative about a win but i mean you take a win as a win right like it's two points it was a pretty positive win though you gotta gotta take you gotta say how four goals first career had your first four goal game had six yeah. points and Dante was all about, he has six points before Bedard even has six points. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You always got Bedard, gotta... three goals and assist. Like, yeah. holy man. Yeah. You always, always got to compare to Bedard. I mean, he kind of sets that standard. So to, to be, to beat him, I mean, they're pretty good friends, it seems. And it's like, yeah. maybe there's a little, little Japan going back and forth there. Yeah. I got six points and, before you did. And you got Sposal flying everywhere last night. He was all over the place. Yeah. Like that goal, goal he scored. Whew, yeah. That was nice. Oh yeah, like, he was he was more of a rover than a defenseman last night. I think. Yeah, <laughs> he was always in the offensive zone. I definitely, tell you, those, a couple of those assists on with the how goals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, um, yeah, we see his skill. Like he's seen that one goal in the juniors where he flying down the wing and he went top corner. Like it was like the goal of the tournament, the one that got shut down in there at at Christmas time. Like that was that was one of the nicest goals I've seen ever almost right and yeah. so but yeah i mean a win is a win they had quite a bit of positives but there is some negatives i mean but uh you can't you can't argue with two wins on this to start this road trip right like you said we got to be minimum 500 right yeah so you're two two-thirds of the way there to 500 i mean 
Is there anything else you want to say about those two games before we kind of move forward? Oh, well, they took another too many men on the ice penalty in the, the Victoria yeah. game. That's... Yeah, it was just some, it was some bad penalties right there, and and they and, and you got according to the WHL's website, Armstrong served all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was, and he's he the... served the extra uh, in Vancouver. He served two's yeah, the, the Vaughn fight, the Vaughn from the Vaughn's Corbin Vaughn's, yeah. yeah, the instigator. So he, so the, des- the designated server, penalty yeah, server. penalty guy, right? Yeah, maybe maybe, maybe he's got some minor injury or something, and they don't want to. Well, I don't. Him but him. you don't see him on the penalty kill, right? So yeah, but you don't usually have a nineteen-year-old killing or sitting in the box. I know, right? He's usually your fourth-line young guy or something that's definitely not on the yeah. PK. Like Armstrong yeah. kind of should be on the PK. I was thinking because I noticed that it's like it's always Armstrong. Like, and you think about it, yeah, he's not on the penalty kill once you think about it, right? Yeah. So he's a guy that I, I think he's got some energy. He could be or should. I mean, I'm not a coach, but he, he should be out there, I think, you know. I, th- I think they've got their, their PK pretty set. I know, guys. right? It's set. It's Spencer. It's it's your higher-end guys, right? Like Spencer oh, and Howe and Whitehead and Bedard are always out there. Rowan. And Rowan's out there. Yeah, so. so. Well, once, once, Bedard, uh, once Bedard goes, they'll, they'll probably tweak a bunch of things. Yeah, for maybe, sure. Maybe we'll see right. him on there, but. He seems to be more of a power play, second power play guy, and that's that's his role. His... Yeah. But hey. Yeah, I mean, right. I, I just I just kind of find it funny that a nineteen year old is serving the the, the extras. And yeah, stuff, yeah. But... Yeah, no, for sure. That I did notice that as well. So it would definitely was interesting. Um, yeah. So I guess yeah. Then we're on to Kelowna on Tuesday. So you know, a little bit of a quick turnaround. Kelowna now, I mean, one guy that, uh, to note, Andrew Crystal, he's, he's killing it in, uh, in Kelowna there. You just look at the, at the standing or the stats leaders and he's third, um, in the league with 16 goals, 23 assists, 39 points, like it tied for second in points. Yeah. It's sure. Yeah. Tied for second in points. There you go. Yeah. With Connor McLennan. So you look at the top eight. And there's uh, two 20s, and the rest of them are all 17s. You got Bedard, McLennan, Crystal, Owen Peterson at 20 in Winnipeg. You got Cohen Zimmer and Riley Height of PG. And then you got Benson in Winnipeg. And then Howe rounding out the, the top eight. So that's a lot of draft eligible players. That's and a then, lot of young guys. That's a lot of How young is, guys, right? How doesn't even. How doesn't even turn 17 until tomorrow. Yeah, exactly, right? And so he's he's 17, but he's not draft eligible until the next year. So yeah, um, it's it's interesting. I mean, this everybody keeps talking about this draft, like that that Bantam draft, and how much talent there is in that draft, and it's it's coming to fruition already at 17. Like you see all this talent, and we're going to see three of these top eight scorers here this week. And yeah, Crystal, yeah, man, he's got. He's got some serious skill. I mean, other than that, though, Kelowna, you know, they're they're chugging along. They're not, you know, they didn't get too hurt with the, you know, not host. I mean, they were ready to host the Memorial Cup, and you know, they had they made trades, and I mean, it seems like they're not they're not in the dump after that. Like they're still relevant. Like they're sitting in seventh place in the league. Or in the Western Conference at nine, ten, and one. So you know they're right at the same level as the Pats are. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty much the exact same spot. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see. Be should be a good game. I think they they do have a few guys that can score, like Crystal. They've got uh, Colton Dock. They've got you know he was in Saskatoon here. Um, so it should be a pretty good game, I think. And then, uh, then you got next night Kamloops. Now, back to back again. So that's it's going to be tough, tough go. But uh, Dante mentioned it last night. Uh, five and one in the second half of back to backs. That's that's actually a pretty good number. Yeah, it's uh, surprising when he said that. I was, I never even thought of it. But man, that's five and one. That's pretty pretty impressive. Yeah, you know, the second game's always tough, right? It's like okay, you play back to back. The other team may not have played a back to back. They may have, but uh, yeah. So I mean, all eyes are on Kamloops right now, obviously with them hosting the Memorial Cup, and they're doing not bad at all. Like they're eleven, five, three, and one. So 
good for fourth in the Western Conference. In those um, 20 games, they've only allowed 48 goals. So they're pretty stingy defensively. Yeah, right. And maybe going into the season, goaltending was a question mark with Dylan Ernst. He's, you know, he hasn't, it wasn't a starter. They, he was behind Grand this is the last two years. So, but it seems like he's, he's been playing pretty well. A 229 goals against average, 922 save percentage is, is better than pretty well. <laughs> Yeah, right. I mean, Kevin's been looking at it. There's that's second fewest goals against in the whole league. Only Saskatoon's given up less at 44. So that's pretty impressive. Um, obviously, they're led by Logan Stankov, and he's he's hot. Like he's he's rolling along, a goal a game pace. Um, and then obviously they've they've made some trades, a couple trades here and there. I mean, their one pickup. Um, at Edmonton, what was the guy's name again? The import, Demick. Uh, Jacob Demick. Demick. Yeah, and uh, but he's not gonna be ready till the new year, so we're not gonna see him. And he kind of, when I talked to Bill about that, he's like, "Yeah, well, they're they're building their team for the Memorial Cup. Like, they don't have to build. Well, obviously, they do want to do as well as they can in the playoffs, but they don't have to win the league, right? Yeah. So you know, you look at Seattle making all those moves now because they need. You know, they need to get their team, get them rolling for the playoffs, right? So Seattle spent a lot of capital already. Kamloops is maybe biding their time, waiting, waiting for some teams to to drop out of playoff contention per se, and maybe, you know, be a little more selective later, you know, closer to the trade deadline and and build a team for, you know, for the Memorial Cup. So it doesn't it, seem like they need to really go all in, like they don't have to yeah. spend 10 years with the draft picks or like that, that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's, right. It's like they have seven guys that are averaging a po- almost a point or more per game, which is pretty impressive. So just have to shore up things, I guess. I, I don't know. It yeah. Right. Like they're, they're rolling. Yeah. So six games over 500. That's pretty good. Yeah. Or five games or whatever, six games over. I think, I don't think, I think Bill mentioned that their home record isn't, great this year but uh i mean obviously that means their road record is doing pretty good so maybe you know they could they could do a little better at home so i guess we'll see what happens on wednesday within the pats rolling they're five three and two at home five three and two yeah so five five and five basically yeah i just count i always count overtime losses as a loss i just go you lost the game game. one one on the road yeah so there you go (laughs) yeah so they're doing well on the road but not quite as good as home as you'd you'd think right so, yeah, that'd be interesting to see. Oh, and then yeah, I guess it's on to PG, and that that's gonna be an interesting game. Uh, Pats, we'll see Cole Dubinsky. Man, that guy is hot. Ever since he left Regina, he is just on a tear. Um, Six goals in seven games, eleven points. That's yeah. He's yeah. They're, they're they score a ton of goals lately, though. They do. Like they are. I think. What is it? Yeah, they're tops in the Western Conference. You're thinking Prince George scored the most goals in, <laughs> yeah. in the conference? Yeah, like they they are second in overall in the league behind Winnipeg. That's it. Yeah. So, I mean, they were down for quite a while. Like, you know, they they were struggling for quite a while. They made some good picks. Like, like they made some good draft picks, and they're coming to fruition. That's, that's the thing. Like we said, Cohen Zimmer, Riley Height, like, those two guys draft eligible they're leading the team um and scoring and then they've got three solid 20s like you chase wheatcroft they brought in they brought in cole dubinsky now and then they're what was their other 20 i can't remember the name offhand but i mean they've got like decent scoring 20s right like they don't i mean chase wheatcroft i mean i don't know what his career goals is but he's got 17 already this year like there you go. Like he, yeah, he only had I think what sixteen or something he had sixteen last, last year. year, right? So and yeah, sixteen last year, seventeen this year. So that's whew, that's not bad at all. In Thirty uh, plus fewer games. It's yeah, pretty, right. Pretty so and, and another thing, this is going to be the third game in four nights for Regina, and the Prince George won't uh, or won't be playing all week. So they're going to be rested. Uh, it's going to be a tough, I mean, it's not a super long trip, but it is quite a bit of a trip up there, but they got the day off. 
so see how it goes. I mean, there isn't going to be much time for practicing. Get, you know, get like they say, Janelle in into things here because you, you got Sunday off, Monday off. You play two. Thursday is going to be a travel day to Prince George, and they play Friday. Like it's it's um it's a tight tight schedule on this road trip. Yeah, and their other twenty is Noah Boyko. Boyko, right? There we go. They got it from Lethbridge as well. So all three of their all three of their twenty year olds are uh, in, acquired via trade. Yeah, so I mean he had he had sixteen goals last year, so five already this year. That's not not terrible. I mean, but it'll be good to see Prince George. They're they're on their way back up. You know they they were down for a while and they're making their way back up the the standings. So they got a couple defensemen that that have points too. Hudson Thornton. Yeah, he's got thirty points in twenty three games, and uh, so the, uh, Ethan Samson has eighteen so, yeah. points in twenty games. Yeah, so some scoring it's from a lot the back of end too. From the back end. Yeah, yeah, like that's they have 13, thirteen goals combined just between the two. Yeah, and uh, that's probably close to what the Pats have, probably more than the Pats <laughs> have from the defense total, I right? Would, I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> so. But then, you know, and then you play Friday night and then a quick stop in Edmonton on Sunday. I mean, we've seen Edmonton a couple times already. They're struggling. It's not going to be an easy game. I mean, can't it's take end- them lightly. They no. Can't take those guys lightly. So. And it seems like Edmonton, Colby Hay, I mean, it seems he's really been playing well. You see him making some highlight reel saves. He's kind of holding them in as much as he can, it seems. Yeah, for for what for what it's worth, he's he's played pretty well. I mean, his numbers are not very good, but he's he's played pretty well. Yeah, you can't look at the numbers. The team's the team is rough, obviously, and he's given up goals. But it seems like he holds them in there, right? Like he's got an eight eighty eight save percentage. I mean, that's it's not great, but it's not terrible, right? You know, the team isn't good, so he's getting lots of shots on goal. Um, so keeper has an eight eighty one. So yeah, right. I mean. <laughs> He's had a couple of rough outings here lately, right? With the Winnipeg game, yep. and, it's, and then this uh, this start in in Victoria here, where he's given up some goals. But uh, it'll be you know that'll be four games in what the seven six days, whatever yep. it is. But uh, yeah, hopefully you know you get the two wins. You can't say Edmonton's a guaranteed win because it's not, but it's there. It'll be tough. Like we were thinking, you know, Edmonton and then two other wins. Well, we're almost there. So if they can, like I said, if you can get maybe one or two of these first three games and then roll into Edmonton, you know, with three, three and two or, or four and one even, that would be nice to see. I think it's attainable, but you never know, right? Yeah. You don't, you don't, we don't know enough about these teams. Like we don't know enough about Kelowna, Kamloops, Prince George. We just yeah. see them score a bunch of goals. Yeah, see some highlights. Yeah, that so kind of stuff. You never know. But yeah, the that's the thing. The Pats just need to find that consistency, right? Like, you see them play a good game in Vancouver, a tight, low-scoring game, and then you see a, a sloppy, high-scoring game in Victoria. It's kind of all over the map, right? Like, every game is a literal roller coaster. Yeah. Right. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Some some are way worse than others. <laughs> yeah, like you, you, it's like that Everett game. Like that was such a good game, and then well, it was just before that that Moostra game was just a total slog. It it was an ugly, one of the ugliest games I've ever seen. It was, it, that was that was a dud. That you was know, a and dud. and it's Regina Moostra. You don't expect that at all. And then you know Everett rolls in. You haven't played against these guys. You don't really know what they're about. And it's one of the best games of the year. If Sometimes not the last those few are years. the best games. Yeah, you don't know, right? You you, you kind of think, expect. well, maybe they're gonna they're gonna play a little. It's gonna be a little slower paced or or whatever. You feeling out kind of thing because you don't know what they're about, right? But it, it was total opposite. So and those that's, games are more more of a sprint than a marathon, I guess. Yeah, so. right. <laughs> and that's what kind of Vancouver seemed to be. It just it wasn't. It was just a low scoring game like that. Ever one was three two or whatever it was, and. Yeah. And yeah, two of the better games. I've really enjoyed those ones for sure. So, I mean, yeah, that's it's a busy upcoming week here. Four games this week. Uh, you know, two two wins to start the road trip was nice. Hopefully, we can uh, keep that rolling and into next week. So, any any other thoughts you have? Anything else on the docket there today, Kevin? No, I think that's about it. They gotta they gotta really work on the penalty kill or. 
They, they gave me a big trouble. The four for yeah. five last night. And I mean, it's been solid all year, so it's uh, it's not too concerning, but it is just a little, right? You're just like, ooh, I gave up four, right? I mean, they gave up some penalty kill goals in, in Winnipeg, but that's Winnipeg. Yeah. But uh, Victoria, it's like, ooh, it's kind of Victoria, you know, kind of tighten just, that up. Looking at the, the actual overall PK stats, they're 14th at 77.3, but then there's, there's a bunch of teams that are way worse, like Spokane is at 60%, just over 60%. Edmonton Oil Kings are at 68.4. So I guess I guess one game, four, four, four on four or five, is, is not terrible. Just yeah. Don't let it happen again. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Like, they were top 10 before, and I think since those Winnipeg games, yeah, I hadn't looked at it lately, but yeah, they've dropped um, – dropped way down now in uh in the rankings but i mean and they have given up some goals lately like their third they've got up in the east now they've got up 91 goals they've only they've scored 90 so it's kind of kind of trending towards la- kind of what last year was happening they, they could score but they couldn't keep the puck out of the net it's as well eerily eerily similar yeah and it's hopefully it isn't a trend like because it's been you know, obviously quite a few goals given up these last few games here but uh and i mean it's not going to get easier like like i said these three teams in bc are going to be tough like pg scores goals like that's going to be a tough game so we'll see what they're made of for sure so well if you got nothing else i think that's uh, time time we head out and uh hopefully we can see some more quality some interesting games quality games you know we've seen a couple dandies already one way or another right so Couple kind of goals you would have liked Saturday's game. Though. Yeah, You're exactly. Very reminiscent of the early '80s, yeah. minus the fights. <laughs> and if you were a fan of good hockey, Friday night was your game, right? So definitely the perfect, so. The perfect weekend. <laughs> yeah, right. A little bit for everybody. Something for everybody. So some late starts again this week, but so stay up and watch some games, and uh, yeah, we'll chat next week. Have a good night, folks. Have a good one.